is Tanya, and I'm currently a student at the University of Florida. I study Russian language and literature, and today I just really want to talk to you all about study abroad in Central Asia, you know, and why I decided to study abroad, and you know, just like sit down and like, like act like if we were just, you know, normal students, and I came up to you and I was like, oh, this is what I'm doing, like, this is why I recommend it, maybe throw in a few tips and tricks here, but you know, I don't really have like a set plan of what I'm going to talk about. I just kind of wanted to explain and just like really vlog about my experiences here and my experiences in my life, so. Um, here we go. So I am currently studying abroad in Almaty, Kazakhstan. Almaty is, was the prior capital of Kazakhstan. It's longer, but it's a really nice uh, historical city. And yes, I am studying Russian in Central Asia. And I know that's kind of weird, but Kazakhstan is a post-Soviet state. And I have studied abroad before, but it was only over the summer. And I studied abroad in Estonia. And that, that was a really good experience. But yeah, let's just get started and kind of just talk about why I decided to study abroad. So in my school, we have a great Russian department. You may want to ask like, oh, what if, what if I'm in school? Like, can I just like stay at my university and just like learn the language? That is so true. Like if you don't feel comfortable with going abroad, that's totally fine. Like you can definitely learn a language. There are so many opportunities online, movies, the news, you have your professors, you can definitely learn that. But what I was looking more um, forward to is like, a cultural immersion and not necessarily like Russian cultural immersion because there's many like countries that do speak Russian but Russian culture they have their own so Kazakh, Kazakhstan a lot of people here speak Kazakh and Russian because it was a post-Soviet state and I just kind of really liked like since I had st studied in Estonia which was also post-Soviet state I kind of just wanted to see how you know the countries have changed and just like really look into it like after the fall of the Soviet Union what has happened so a lot of people really don't know much about Kazakhstan which like really you know it wasn't surprising I mean the first time I heard about it what maybe like a year maybe a year and a half ago and Honestly, most of that was because, I don't know if you know this movie, it's called Borat. It wasn't even filmed in Kazakhstan, but it's like the only thing I really saw. And then like I went online, I researched it a bit. And I got over here and it was just so amazing. Like it really, it really did surprise me. I was expecting more Soviet Union styled, um, you know, not very much, but it's like very much, you know, capitalistic if, you, if I do say so myself you have like McDonald's well McDonald's just came in two years ago but you have McDonald's you have like Pizza Hut you have all these you know American um, food restaurants and then you have a lot of you have a huge mall and it's definitely like has changed so much since um, what I've seen and read about the 1990s and it's really surprised me so I came here in August and it is now November and yeah I only have one month left and um, I currently live with a Cossack family and they've really included me I, I was really like worried about that so as a, like before I kind of start going about this program, let's go back to when I was in school and decided why I wanted to start going abroad. So as I said before, I do study Russian language and literature. And when I was in school, it was really nice. Like I, I really did like get, we have like a, our own Russian um, club and I did become, I made great friends in that club, but it was just still something missing. Like I really did want to go abroad and I, w I did have the opportunity to go over the summer like in, in Estonia and it was very good except you know I just feel like your first time studying abroad is you just it's like your first time you don't really know the language you haven't really practiced it I was m myself again like I was a beginner I had only studied Russian for one year so once I got there I didn't really have any experience like full-on speaking in the language and it was really difficult for me um, plus like I did like live in a dorm and I was with like a lot of American students I didn't really like get immersed uh, as much as I should have and so I definitely thought I felt like I would definitely have improved more if I gone a second time and for a longer time too because over the summer I was only there for around two months eight weeks yeah and so now I'm here for around uh, 16 weeks so around four months and yeah I've really I definitely encourage it. Now, again, like I'm gonna tell you right now, 
I am not like I don't really have my parents helping me pay for school I didn't have anyone like really tell me hey like here's this this and this and this and go abroad and like this and that like I, I didn't really get a full ride except for like last last summer like I was able to get a full ride for the summer which I was just grateful for it was a scholarship that I received and well for this time I didn't receive a full scholarship and let me go more into like the program because there's definitely bare, like a lot of options for you if you want to go study abroad so what I recommend when it comes to studying abroad is like definitely look into scholarships and I know this is so vague like oh yeah go look for scholarships maybe they'll help pay for you but I'll give you like specific ones that will help you uh, pay to go abroad. So I know like Boren, Boren really helps. You apply in January and they'll give you up to like 10 grand. Now the thing with Boren is like they really do recommend like whole year. So if like you can go study abroad for a whole year, you are more likely to get Boren or if you're like a STEM major. I wasn't any of that. I did apply, I didn't get it, but um, I know like many people do, so you definitely have that opportunity if you want to go check that out. So like FLAS, the FLAS is good for the summer, um, foreign language area studies scholarship. Yeah, I got that to study at my school um, for a year and then I got it the second year, but I had to deny it because I wanted to go study abroad for a whole semester. So it really depends like the time that you're going. Now, you can definitely like look into other little scholarships and like really do do your research, like go to your study abroad office and ask them. And I'm, and then also financial aid, if you are eligible for financial aid, that also uh, definitely helps. I'm currently studying abroad with the American Councils. And yes, it's a pretty expensive program, I will say. It's called, like a lot of like other out, like programs just try to like be as close as they can to the American Council. So even like when I got, uh, I went to study abroad with this other program, like they were, they were just trying to resemble their curriculum from the American Councils because honestly, the American Councils is like the Cadillac of study abroad programs. I actually read that on Reddit, so, but I do agree. Since I've been here, I certainly do agree, and it is expensive for a reason. So. Going into study abroad, again, like I got some scholarships, I didn't get the whole thing paid for. I think I got like half, maybe a little over. And that was just like little scholarships, I didn't get like the whole thing. So I would just say, really think about it, really like think about why you want to study abroad. I was talking in my last video and I had not realized that as I was talking, my battery completely died on me. So yeah, and I didn't have time to... Uh, to start over while there was daylight so i had to come back because I, I was meeting with my language partner who really helped me a lot with my homework and my exams so that was very nice of her we went and had some coffee and i'll probably put that in at the end so that you can see what happened but um yeah i i stopped but um i can go back to what i was talking about now as i was saying before when it comes to study abroad and you, you need to decide for yourself whether or not that's something that you want to do. Because yes, it is definitely expensive and it really depends because you, you should just look at yourself. What are you doing um, with your career? What's your major? Like if, if you're, you're a Russian major, it would make sense for you to go abroad. You should never really think about money when it comes to your education. Your education is a priority. And don't think of this as like, oh my goodness, I'm losing all this money. No, think of it as a way that, hey, you're investing in your future because when you come abroad, you're gonna learn the language. Especially if you're like with a great program, you're gonna learn it. You're gonna be speaking it every day. It's gonna be skill that you acquire and you could probably get really good jobs with it. So don't be like, oh my goodness, I'm losing all this money. No, you're investing in your future. And that's the way to look at it. So now I'm gonna go into talking a little bit more on the American Council's program and what I think about it and how I actually believe that it's an amazing program and how it really compared to my last study abroad experience. So when I arrived here, the thing, the thing about the American Council's is they really do plan out everything. So you do have different options when it comes to studying abroad, but um, I think having everything set up is a lot better. For example, you can definitely go and apply directly to the school in the country that you want to study at. So for example, if you know the university, you could just directly apply to there and then you could tell your scholarship people like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay there for a year, yada, yada, yada. And yeah, that's 
all great and stuff, but don't forget you're gonna have to find apartments. You're gonna have to find, you know, you're gonna have to know the area. You don't even know, like, are you gonna live in a dorm? Are you gonna find someone to live with? Are you, you don't, do you have to, you have to get health care? Just a lot of things go into it. Oh, and applying for visas. So the American Council is what it does. Yes, it's pretty expensive, but they do take care of all of that. Your visa is completely done by the time um, it's, when, when it's time to leave, you have an application process, you're continuously doing stuff. You basically send them your passports and have the visa ready for you. And what you do is we all have to meet for an orientation. It's about a three day orientation in DC. And it is so nice. Like I got to see Explore DC and then I went for the three day orientation. It was a nice hotel, it was in a great area. And we basically went over um, what the American Councils does. And like better prepare yourself for studying abroad in wherever you're going well with my in my case i'm doing the our last program so we all had people who are we're going to st petersburg who, who were going to moscow who are going to kazakhstan so we met up and we talked about what we what was what are the most important things that we need to know and do and how to behave so it was a great orientation that really helped prepare yourself then we got on our flights and we went to kazakhstan and once i got to kazakhstan Everything was just a breeze. My host family, I have my host mom and I have my host sister. They just met me at the airport. It was just a breeze. We went home and um, I was able to just like put all my stuff. I didn't have to worry about like, where is this? Where is that? No, like they knew everything and they explained me everything and it was not hard to get adjusted at all. So <clears throat> once I arrived, I just got my stuff ready and then just relaxed and went to bed. So that was really nice and also like with just the importance of having a great host family like the fact that American Council is like like 99% of these host families are amazing they know what they they're doing they've been working with students for years the next day we were gonna have a holiday with their family and we were gonna spend time with each other and it was so nice i mean i didn't really know what was going on i didn't really know about the kaza culture but it was just like a first experience so um the next day we went to their family's house and we celebrated 40 days so basically with that it's a baby shower however here they don't really celebrate the baby shower before the baby's born like we do in america but you celebrate the baby shower uh 40 days after the baby is born so he's finally like a person and it's a huge festival like we got there um, we said we were gonna eat lunch but basically you get there you um, you drink chai you eat you know snacks and stuff and then comes lunch and you have a huge feast and then you go dance for a little bit then you come back and you eat some more and like here don't worry you're gonna eat a lot like there's nothing you can do about it so your family you know it's their way of showing you that they care for you and they appreciate you coming and um, so they give you a lot of food. And my first, you know, cultural immersion here. It, it just happened the first day. So that's a good thing with American councils. You just jump right into it. Like it's not really, you know, a whole process where you have to wait, you have to meet people. No, you go straight into cultural immersion. And you just, you really do get close with your um, host families and um, you go to school. And you, that's another thing. Like, you don't have to worry about choosing your professors. Oh, am I taking the right classes? No, they have the whole curriculum already set up, good to go. First day of class, you go to your first class and um, you can trust that the teachers have so much experience. So you don't have to worry about, oh, is this teacher like good or not? No, they've been teaching forever with the program. Like the American Council's program, it's been going on since before when the Soviet Union was still going on. So it's a very, um, they are very experienced. Like my teacher would taught in the Soviet Union. So I fully trusted that she knows what she's doing and she's doing her best to make sure we're learning and you are constantly learning. All the classes are strictly in Russian, which is very nice because they don't, if they need to explain you a word, they won't even go into English. It's just straight on Russian, which is just full cultural immersion. Another thing, like I told you, like I just got back from having coffee with my language partner. We all have language partners. You are assigned and you really become so close to them. So, you know, you can ask them, hey, can you come and get coffee and help me with my homework? They do that. And then also the biggest thing that I didn't do in my last study abroad was I didn't really get to know the locals, but here, 
just by having language partners, I go and hang out with them and they show me around and they show me their friends and I meet their friends. So you get to know a lot of locals, which means you get to speak a lot of Russian because if you're always with, you know, the American Council's group and they're American and that's not a bad thing, like for sure hang out with them, but you will probably have want to speak English with them just because it's going to be easier for you. But when you actually are forced to speak Russian, that's when you learn and you you use vocabulary that you would not use. Like I would read these books and um, learn these big words that I don't even know how to use or when I would use them because the only thing I would say is like, oh hi, like can I go to the store? Um, I need to buy this, I need to get this, which is good for a beginner, but once you start getting more advanced, that's when it's like, that's the time that you want to start talking to other people and making friends so that you can have political conversations, you can have conversations on a more advanced level. And since you're here for four months, you're constantly speaking and you, you would not even imagine how much you can learn in four months. Like I learned a lot in two months without even really speaking to the locals. So I've definitely advanced in these four months. Excursions outside of the city we see, we, Kazakhstan is the ninth largest country by land mass. So we took a plane flight all the way to Astana to the capital, which is more to the north of Kazakhstan. And then we went to the village and we got to see the lakes and you, the Grand Canyon of Kazakhstan. And we, all of that was planned out. There was no need for me to figure out, oh, I need to do this, 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 that. And I was, I questioned myself a lot before deciding to go to study abroad. I was really questioning, is this worth it? Can I not just stay in my hometown and just talk to my Russian friends? Well, you can, but at the end of the day, nothing beats this. I, I speak Russian every single day just to get around, to talk to friends, and that's the way you learn. So highly recommend, if that's what your goal is, is to be fluent in a language, highly recommend to go abroad and get that cultural experience. Because another thing that you don't get at school that you do get here is a slang. I you you start understanding their um, their sayings, um, which you wouldn't really do if you were in the states because you know it, it's very different. So you get cultural immersion. You get to talk to people, and you get to learn about their culture and just little things that they don't want you to do or what's disrespectful for them is extremely important. So maybe I'll do like another video on like the do's and don'ts of foreigners here in Kazakhstan. In another video, I definitely do plan on vlogging a lot more. I just kind of wanted to do a whole video on like why I decided to study abroad, how my program is, and you know, try to get people to, I, I really don't want anyone to be afraid to take out that loan because it's, it's not, it's loan is such a heavy word, but at the end of the day, it's an investment. So. If you need to find scholarships and do anything you can, like definitely don't be afraid. And just by being here and speaking it every day and listening to it every day, you will learn a lot. Yeah, so I'm gonna continue to vlog. I'll put some videos up on like me meeting with my language partner. I hope you like it and subscribe down below if you wanna continue to see more of my travels. Let me know if there's anything else you'd um, want to ask about. I'm down to give you a lot more videos on study abroad and how it's like. So hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day and bye. Thank you so much for watching. Look who came <laughs> to help me with my homework, because Russian's so hard. <laughs>